Hi everybody, welcome to this product school webinar on succeeding as a product manager with anxiety. Just as a reminder, uh, this webinar is for educational purposes only and does not constitute medical advice. So before we get into it, uh, I'd like to share a little bit about myself. Uh, again, my name is Lee. I'm a UC Berkeley graduate. I studied cognitive science while I was there. Uh, Professor James Landay and his graduate student, Scott Clemmer, were really uh, instrumental in me getting inspired by uh, user experience design and human computer interaction. And as a result, I practice product design after school at companies like Autodesk and Mindjet. While I was at Mindjet, I stepped into product management, after which I did some product and UX consulting for a few years, um, working with small and medium-sized companies and startups. Um, I then went um, full-time into product management, and I've worked in various areas like nonprofit, uh, nonprofit technology, um, uh, focusing on data analytics. I've also worked in HR tech, uh, doing platform work, uh, API integration, and B2B features. Um, I've also worked in, at Shell in their commercial digital ventures division, working on some venture and strategy work, and um, also uh, manage mobile apps at AAA. Most recently, I worked um, in hardware research, mobile apps, and early device concepting at Google. So today, uh, we're going to talk about succeeding as a product manager with anxiety. First, we're going to uh, define what anxiety is. Uh, then we're going to dig deep into anxiety triggers that are specific to product managers in the product management world. Uh, I'd like to um, answer the question, can you succeed as a product manager with anxiety? And then I'd like to discuss how to fill up your anxiety management tool toolbox as a product manager. And I'll leave you with some final thoughts and resources. So I hope that you uh, uh, stay with us till the end. So first of all, what is anxiety and why should we care? Well, anxiety is intense, excessive, and persistent worry and fear about everyday situations. Uh, you can experience a fast heart rate, rapid breathing, sweating, and feeling tired or exhausted because of these physical symptoms. Generalized anxiety is severe, ongoing anxiety that interferes with daily activities. Um, I got this definition from the Mayo Clinic. The, uh, uh, the link is uh, available for you right down below. And the real question is, why should we care? Why should we care about anxiety if we don't struggle with it? The truth of the matter is that anxiety is the uh, most common um, mental health obstacle in the world. Uh, so if this is the case, um, more likely than not, you're probably working with somebody who struggles with anxiety. You could be managing somebody who struggles with anxiety. You might be working for somebody or the founder or CEO of the company that you're working at might be struggling with anxiety. One of your colleagues might be struggling with anxiety. And so because of this, um, it's, um, I believe it's pretty important um, to at least learn about it and also offer um, hope and help. Now, these are all pretty generic uh, definitions of anxiety, but I just wanted to share a little bit about how I personally experience anxiety as a product manager. If I am triggered by something or if, um, I'm not taking care of myself as well as I should. Um, the way that I experience anxiety is that I get um, dry mouth. It's hard for me to swallow. My throat can start to feel constricted. My chest can start to feel constricted and I feel this heaviness on my shoulders. My body literally goes into a bit of a, a, fear, a fear mode. And um, oh, sometimes I could even, um, Feel a little bit like I can't think clearly. Um, and so these are some of the ex uh, uh, physical symptoms that I have when I experience anxiety. And over the years working in product management, I've started to realize that the role of product management um, has a lot of 
triggers, um, a lot of anxiety triggers that are specific to the role. Um, there's a lot about being a product manager that could trigger anxiety, and I wanted to share those with you today. Um, there's a handful of them, so bear with me. First of all, interviewing as a product manager can definitely trigger anxiety. Um, as a product manager, you're going to be interviewed on many different topics. Um, uh, you'll also be pressured to think and act on the spot during an interview, and this could definitely trigger some anxiety in people. Uh, some of the larger uh, big tech companies have very rigorous um, and difficult um, uh, interview loops. And so, yeah, um, uh, going through going through those interviews and uh, also being um, uh, prodded, uh, prodded to think on your feet could definitely uh, trigger anxiety. There's also an issue of a PM role fit. Now, the product management industry has grown so much and there are categories of product management specialties these days. And if you happen to be working um, in a role that is not a good fit uh, for your PM skills, this could definitely trigger anxiety because you may feel like you're not prepared uh, for this particular role. Now, another thing that product managers uh, deal with a lot is balancing the needs. Um, we're often told that we have to work by influencing um, we don't have all the authority, and yet we have to balance the needs of many different stakeholders. Now, balancing needs can start to feel a little bit like um, like balancing uh, spinning plates. <laughs> and um, after doing this for, uh, for a very long time, um, it could definitely trigger anxiety, especially if you um, find that you, you, know, you won't be able to balance everybody's needs. Now, launching products in and of itself can, uh, can trigger anxiety. Um, a lot of responsibility will ultimately end up falling on the product manager. And um, so preparing for and then dealing with the, uh, the fallout of a product launch could definitely trigger anxiety. But that's not all. Uh, there are other triggers. Um, when it comes to time management, the product manager's to-do list can get very long, and um, there are also several people waiting um, on several deliverables from you. It, if you happen to be working at a company that isn't as sensitive or receptive to resourcing projects properly, uh, the to-do list for the product manager on the project or on the team can continue to get longer and longer. So this is something to definitely be aware of and could be an anxiety trigger. There are also interpersonal relations uh, to deal with as a product manager. Um, if you happen to be working on a project or a team or a company where you're experiencing microaggressions, where a manager or an executive or a colleague participates in gaslighting, or you're just not feeling like you're able to build trust or that it's hard to build trust, this could definitely trigger anxiety for you as a product manager. There's also the issue of performance anxiety. There's the typical um, challenges around performance anxiety that we all know, like preparing to speak publicly or to do a presentation. But there's also performance anxiety around um, your creativity and being able to strategize um, for your team. So every so often you uh, may get a creative block and you may not be able to uh, be as creative as you as had hoped or think outside of the box or dream up some of those ideas that your team is really depending on you for. Um, and so when you feel um, an undue amount of responsibility or uh, you get locked up with a creative block, this could definitely trigger anxiety as well. And finally, when it comes to anxiety triggers for that are specific to product management, the cognitive load uh, can, de can definitely be a trigger. When it comes to technology product management, there's always so much to learn and we can never really feel like we've learned or mastered everything. And this sense of there being so much to learn and with um, technology moving so fast, you 
could get stuck with this feeling like you're never mastering um, all the all the technology topics, and um, you know this could this could start to weigh on you and and trigger anxiety. Uh, and yeah, just uh, you know, generally speaking, uh, product managers have to make a lot of decisions, and at some point, decision fatigue could also set in and could trigger anxiety. You thought that we were done with all the anxiety triggers, but I just wanted to point out that there are general anxiety triggers as well that affect everybody. External factors, how you take care of yourself, and what kind of mindset you're living with can all trigger anxiety as well. When it comes to external factors, how your family is doing, how your health is doing, whether or not you um, are... Uh, you know, deficient um, in any vitamins or minerals, uh, your iron levels uh, could all, you know, could all kind of affect um, how you, you know, how you deal with triggers. Your financial situation could be putting stress on you. And then the world's, you know, the world's issues could also be a trigger. How you're taking care of yourself, how you're eating, how you're sleeping, how, you're, how, you're, how your hygiene is, whether or not you're getting exercise, how much screen time you're getting, and how you manage stress in general could all contribute to triggers. And then your mindset could also be a source of anxiety triggers for you. If for some reason you've developed a fixed mindset about a challenge that, you, that you've got going on um, at work, or if you've got a fixed mindset in general about life, this could really, uh, you know, hinder your hinder your growth. Um, sometimes learned helplessness becomes a problem where you've kind of given up on um, having an impact or having an effect on a certain problem or obstacle and you uh, throw up your hands and give up. Blaming, shaming, avoidance, um, all of these things um, don't work in your favor um, and don't really uh, uh, you know, benefit you in the long run. And then that's that sense of having to defend yourself or be in a state of self-defense. That's pretty much the classic uh, anxiety trigger. So after reviewing this huge collection of triggers for anxiety, um, you might be throwing your hands up in the air as well and giving up. But actually, uh, there is really good news, um, and I'm, I'm here to tell you that there is good news. Generalized anxiety does not have to completely stop you from becoming a successful product manager. Your professional journey brought you to the doorstep of product management. Now is the time to reflect on why you enjoy this role. Where do you excel? What energizes you? What part of the role makes your fear melt away? and allows you to experience mastery and flow. And I would ask you at this point to get really specific about why you love PM, because it will help fuel you and fill up your anxiety management toolbox. So to summarize, what we need to do is first become aware of your triggers, and then next, prepare your anxiety toolbox. So we could just take a second to review some of those product management specific triggers that I shared with you. Really look at that list and try and see if any of these triggers speak to you or if you've experienced any of them. You can also think of some of the triggers that are specific to you that aren't listed here. And I challenge you to become more and more aware of these triggers either as you're reflecting on your day, your work day, or your work week, or if you can become aware of them in the moment as they're happening. The more you become aware of your triggers, the more you can actually do something about them. Finally, your anxiety management toolbox. The great news is that there are a lot of tools that you can put in your toolbox, and I've listed them here some of them here. I've put them into four groups, avoiding isolation, getting creative, being prepared, fighting back. So I'll just quickly review these. 
and uh, hopefully they will spark some ideas in you and allow you to fill up your anxiety management toolbox with some tools. So if there's anything I could say um, uh, that is the most important thing to do when you're filling up your toolbox, it would be to avoid isolation. I think that's why I put this, uh, put this section first. It's, uh, it's very tempting to isolate and um, uh, um, kind of sit with your anxious feelings and uh, struggle with your anxiety alone. Uh, but <clears throat> from my experience, uh, avoiding isolation is one of the best things you can do for yourself and for, uh, for your job and your career. Things like therapy and psychiatry, uh, product management industry groups like Product School and others, um, getting a coach, either a career coach or a life coach, uh, making sure that you get out in nature uh, or spend time with animals as it suits your personality and your preference, um, making sure that you collect allies, uh, people who you can really depend on, who you've had good experiences with, who trust you, and who could be your allies and sponsors in the product management industry great. And also trying to find ways where you can help others and maybe uh, gain some strength that way. These are some of the key tools that you can put in your toolbox. Next, getting creative. When I mean get creative, I mean thinking outside of the box because a product manager who struggles with anxiety may not be taking the traditional product management path, may not be able to have some of those traditional product management successes. They're gonna to have to get creative. You can get creative with job arrangements. Um, you could work on contract, you could do contract to hire, you could, um, uh, you could share a job, you could uh, get really specific about the arrangements that are good for you, that avoid some of your uh, most pressing triggers. These are some things that you could do. You could, uh, uh, spend a little more time and be a little bit more picky about finding the right company culture that would be right for you. You can also um, pad your job search and extend the amount of time that it will take you to find your next project or your next job to give yourself that time that you might need uh, to do all your research and to get prepared. Um, you could also uh, uh, explore your PM type. Uh, or your PM Daisy, and uh, really get specific about what type of product management work is going to suit you. Some ideas around uh, product management type could be that you could create, um, that you could develop a specialty for yourself around working in mental health apps or the healthcare space uh, so that you can help others that are like yourself. Uh, you could also um, explore the idea of uh, focusing on people management and managing um, and uh, coaching other product managers so that uh, you know you can help others manage their anxiety uh, and stress as well as they can so that you can build like the, you know, the best teams at your company or the best teams in the industry um, yeah or you can uh, you know choose a PM role that um, is it's not as triggering for you um, maybe the the lead times or the release times for the types of products and services you work on are a little bit longer. So perhaps if time management is one of your biggest triggers, you could stop uh, triggering that um, at work. So those are some ideas about how to get creative. Next, uh, being prepared. Um, this is going to start to get really important um, because if you are considering yourself a product manager for the long haul, you're going to have to think of yourself as an athlete, either a physical athlete or a mental athlete. And you want to prepare yourself um, for the long haul. And uh, some things that you can do to be more prepared is to think about uh, uh, writing up a pre-mortem. I know some big tech companies do this often, but you could um, write up a pre-mortem and think about all the things that could possibly go wrong or all the things that could possibly trigger you and developing <clears throat> a plan uh, for how you might avoid some of those mistakes or obstacles. Um, you could do a, a, a risk assessment actually at any point in your job or project or career. A uh, pre-mortem would happen ahead of time for, for anything, any new prospect, but a risk assessment can happen at any time. 
Um, another thing you can do is to find the right words or phrases to use when you are triggered. Um, this particular tool has helped me a lot and I love finding the right words um, and the right phrases to keep in my back pocket. So one specific example of that is um, for times when in a meeting, uh, somebody, else, um, somebody else may take my idea or speak over me. Um, I have found that instead of getting triggered or when I get triggered, I have a script that I use. And one of my favorite phrases, uh, the right words that I like to say at that moment is, thank you colleague for spotlighting my point. Thank you for spotlighting my point. And this is a way that I can um, basically deal uh, with an anxious feeling uh, by using the right words. Um, and in this, in this way, I've collected um, a few key phrases that I can use um, in certain situations that trigger me. Um, you can be prepared also by creating an action plan, an action plan that makes you feel more comfortable and more prepared. And in general, practice, practice, practice. Practice as much as you can for whatever area of the product management field is um, more challenging for you, whether that be interviewing, whether that be having difficult conversations, whether that be dealing with ambiguity, whether that be having one-on-one -on -one conversations or interpersonal relations, any of those things, practice them as much as you can. Easier said than done, I know, but I had to mention it. And finally, fight back. This is where I get to remind you again that you are already the product manager of you. You are already the CEO of you. Uh, you are the driver of your bus. You are the master of your fate. And you have the power to fight back um, and ha have an active role in overcoming obstacles with anxiety. You can do things like face your fears with a fear ladder worksheet where you write um, several in, in, in product management parlance. It could be use cases or several scenarios that you can rate on a fear scale of one to 10 and then just practice one by one going through and um, um, having those experiences and facing those fears, um, starting with less fearful um, experiences and then moving up to your most fearful experience. Uh, you could also talk back to your anxious thoughts, which is a classic cognitive behavioral therapy technique. Um, you can uh, employ meditation and mindfulness. Um, and this works uh, especially well for me. I have found a lot of relief uh, by practicing mindfulness and meditating. And then any kind of movement um, is really uh, proven uh, to, uh, to, to, to help manage anxiety. So uh, movement, exercise, um, and breath work, you know, anything that gets you moving um, is going gonna, is gonna to be a great tool for managing your anxiety. So here I have some final thoughts. What I do want to say, um, even though there's a lot of tools that we could use um, in our anxiety management toolbox, it is not all good news. Um, uh, anxiety is a struggle, and that might mean that your product management journey or path is not ideal. Um, you might struggle with... Uh, uh, you might, it might take you longer to find work. It might take you longer to get promoted. It might take you longer to find an ideal uh, PM role for you or an ideal work situation. But if you have found that kernel of passion and love for product management and the work that you do, you should be able to succeed. Here are some yeah. great resources uh, for product managers with anxiety. I've got um, some podcasts to share with you and books as well. Um, the Anxiety Guide podcast uh, I have found to be very helpful and useful. The Anxious Achiever podcast is also very good. The Huberman Lab podcast out of Stanford um, has a lot of great scientific research if you're up for uh, very long podcast sessions. And I wanted to call out Lisa Kostova's uh, Female Tech Exec podcast, which could... Um, be very useful for um, women in uh, women in product management, women in technology. Uh, I find that Lisa's podcasts are um, uh, especially uh, poignant, and they really get at the heart of 
uh, the, the world of product management. Um, and they're offered like on a pretty intimate level. And so I think for somebody struggling with anxiety, they could really speak to them. And then these are some classic books uh, that, that have helped me over the years. Uh, Feeling Good by David Burns, uh, Get Out of Your Mind and Into Your Life by Stephen Hayes, Hope and Help for Your Nerves by Claire Weeks, and The Anxiety and Phobia Workbook by Edmund Bourne. Uh, yeah, these are all um, classics in the field, um, focusing on dis di di uh, different aspects of anxiety. Uh, we wanted to make sure uh, to address those for whom anxiety is beyond severe. Uh, we wanted to make sure that you knew that there is help. Uh, uh, the CDC has a 24-hour uh, crisis center line that you are free to call at any time. Um, and there are also some government resources with the full URLs listed here uh, for you to note down if you need help that is just beyond educational or beyond uh, moderate generalized anxiety. And with that, um, this concludes uh, my talk on succeeding as a product manager with anxiety. I do encourage you to stay in touch. I would love to learn a little bit more about your anxiety triggers, um, what kind of tools you have in your anxiety management toolbox. Um, I would love to meet uh, more of you and contact me anytime. Thank you.